Your test tomorrow is on sections 2-1, two, 2-3, two, and 2-4. Um, the first section that we're going to look at in your review goes over solving these equations when you're working with fractions where x is either in the numerator or in the denominator. Uh, for the first question, you have 3x over 8 minus 4x over 3 is equal to 4. When you're doing these, you're going to want to multiply everything by your least common denominator. So between the 8 and the 3, that would give us 24. So we are going to multiply the 3x over 8 by 24. The 8 would become 1. The 24, or sorry, 8 goes into 24 three times. So 8 or 3 times 3x is going to give us 9x. From here, we're going to multiply the 24 by the negative 4x over 3. So 3 goes into 24 8 times. 8 times negative 4x is negative 32x. And then we're going to multiply the 24 times 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. We carry the 1. 4 times 2 plus 1 is 9. From here, we're going to combine our like terms on the left side. So that 9x minus 32x. Bigger sign is negative, so we're going to keep the negative and subtract the two numbers. The 2 is going to turn into 12, making the 3 a 2. 12 minus 9 is 3. 2 minus nothing is 2. So that's 23x is equal to 96. From here, we're going to divide each side by the negative 23. So we get that x is equal to negative 96 over 23. For number 2, we are just going to cross multiply because we have a fraction equal to a fraction. So 6 over x minus 3 is equal to 2 over 2x minus 1. Again, we are cross multiplying these. So we are going to do 6 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 3. We're going to distribute the 6 in. That's going to give us 12x minus 6. Distribute the 2 in. That gives us 2x minus 6. If I move that 2x over by subtracting it from both sides, this is going to give us 10x minus 6 is equal to negative 6. That 6 gets added to both sides, so we have 10x is equal to 0. Now this question was kind of similar to one of the questions that was on your quiz. Whenever you have something times x is equal to 0, you still are dividing over that coefficient of x. So in this case, we'll divide each side by the 10, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So your x is equal to 0. Because your x is in the denominator in the very beginning, plug that in, see if you get 0 in the denominator for either of those fractions. You don't, so that is your answer. For number 3, we have x minus, 1 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x plus 3 is equal to 4 over x squared minus, plus x minus 6. That x squared plus x minus 6 factors to give us x minus 2 times x plus 3. So our least common denominator is x minus 2 times x plus 3, which means x cannot equal 2 and negative 3. So we got to keep that in mind while we're doing this. The 1 over x minus 2, the x minus 2 is already in your least common denominator, so we're going to cross that out and multiply that 1 by x plus 3. The 3 over x plus 3, the x plus 3 is already in our least common denominator, so we cross that out. We multiply that 3 by x minus 2. The 4 is over the least common denominator, so we'll cross that denominator out and multiply the 4 by 1. So ultimately, we have 1 times x plus 3 plus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 4 times 1. Distribute the 1 in, distribute the 3 in. That's going to give us x plus 3 plus 3x minus 6 is equal to 4. Combine your like terms on your left. x plus 3x is 4x. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. And this is still equal to 4. We're going to move the 3 over by adding it to both sides. That gives us 4x is equal to 7. Then we divide each side by the 4. And we have that x is 7 fourths. For your next section, it tells you to simplify and write your answer in a plus b i form. So with number 4, we have 11 minus 2 i minus negative 3 plus 6i. So we have subtraction between these two parentheses. 
we're distributing that negative in and then combining like terms. So if we distribute that negative in first, that's going to give us 11 minus 2i plus 3 minus 6i. If we're writing this in a plus bi form, we're going to combine those constants first, the ones that don't have an i attached to them. So 11 plus 3 gives us 14. Then we combine the i terms of negative 2i and negative 6i. They combine to give us negative 8i. So our answer for this one is 14 minus 8i. So for number 5, we have negative 13 plus 7i plus 15 minus 6i. So this one's not like number, number 4 because there's addition between the two parentheses. So we're just going to get rid of those parentheses and combine like terms. So we have the negative 13 and the 15. 15 minus 13 gives us 2. Then the 7i minus 6i, which is just a positive 1i or i. So that's 2 plus i. For number 6, we have 1 plus i times 3 minus 2i. So with this one, we're going to foil it out. The 1 times 3 is 3. The 1 times negative 2i is negative 2i i times 3 is 3i, and i times negative 2i is negative 2i squared. We said before when we were going over this lesson that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this i squared is going to turn into negative 1. We are going to combine like terms. So this is going to give us 3 plus i minus 2 times negative 1. The negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, so that's 3 plus i plus 2. You combine your like terms with the 3 and the 2 to give you 5 plus i. For 7, you have 4i times 8 plus 5i. So we're going to distribute this 4i in. The 4i times 8 is 32i. The 4i times 5i is 20i squared. Again, that i squared has to be rewritten as negative 1. So that's going to give us... 32i plus 20 times negative 1. So we multiply that 20 by the negative 1, and that gives us 32i minus 20. Now this is not in a plus bi form, and it needs to be. So we're just going to rearrange this to give us negative 20 plus 32i. For our next part, we are rationalizing the denominator and writing the quotient in standard form. So for number 8, we're given negative 5 over 2i. The complex conjugate of that 2i is negative 2i. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by negative 2i. The negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. We keep the i attached to that. The 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. i times i is i squared. We said that i squared is negative 1, so that's going to change the sign on the 4 to be a positive. So you have 10i over 4. Your 10 and your 4 do simplify because they're both divisible by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's 5i over 4. It's 5i over 2, sorry. So 5i over 2. Thank you. For number 9, you have 2 over 4 minus 5i. So this complex, co complex conjugate of the bottom is going to keep the 4, keep the 5i, but change the sign between it. So it's going to be 4 plus 5i. You multiply the top and bottom by that. 2 distributes in, so 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 5i is 10i. On the bottom, you have 4 times 4, which is 16. 4 times 5i is 20i. Negative 5i times 4 is negative 20i, and negative 5i times 5i is negative 25i squared. That i squared is negative 1, so it changes the sign on the 25 to be a positive. The 20i's on the bottom cancel out. On the top, you have nothing to combine, so that's going to be 8 plus 10i over 16 plus 25. Combine your terms on the bottom. The 6 plus 5 is 11. You carry the 1. The 1 plus 2 is going to give you, or the 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. So it's going to give you 8 plus 10i over 41. There are no like terms that these three numbers share, so you are going to leave it as the 8 plus 10i. 
all over 41. For number 10, you have 3 minus i over 2 plus 1. We're going to keep the numerator, keep the denominator, find the complex conjugate of your denominator. So the 2i stays, but it's going to be minus 1 instead. So we multiply top and bottom by 2i minus 1. Up top, you have 3 times 2i, which is 6i. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative i times 2i is negative 2i squared. Negative i times negative 1 is a positive i. This is all going to go over 2i times 2i, which is 4i squared. 2i times negative 1 is negative 2i. 1 times 2i is positive 2i. And then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Those i squared are going to change the sign of the terms that they are attached to. So up top, that negative 2i squared turns into just positive 2. On the bottom, that 4i squared turns into negative 4. Other than that, you combine like terms. So up top, that's the 6i and the positive i, which gives you 7i minus 3 plus 2. On the bottom, the 2i and the negative 2i are opposites, so you're just left with negative 4 minus 1. From here, combine your like terms up top, write it in standard form. So that negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. That's going to go before the 7i. On the bottom, you have negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. You should not be ending with a negative in the denominator. So if that's the case, you are going to change the sign on every single term. So the 5 becomes positive, the 1 becomes positive, the 7i becomes negative. So that's going to give you 1 minus 7i all over 5. The next part of your review asks you to solve the equation by factoring. For number 11, we have 9x squared minus 21x is equal to 0. For this one, you only have two terms on the left side. They both have an x attached to them. They're both divisible by 3. So we can factor out the greatest common factor, which is 3x. That is going to give us 3x times 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. From here, we cannot factor any further, so we're going to set each part equal to 0 and solve. So that's going to be 3x is equal to 0, as well as 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. Your 3x is equal to 0, divide each side by the 3, and that gives you that x is 0. For the 3x minus 7 is equal to 0, add your 7 over. That's 3x is equal to 7. Then divide each side by the 3, and you get that x is equal to 7 thirds. For number 12, you have x squared minus 10x plus 9 is equal to 0. For this one, you have an a that's 1, so find your factors of that 9 that add up to be negative 10. 9 is negative 1 and negative 9. That adds to give you negative 10. So this factor is to be x minus 1 times x minus 9 is equal to 0. We're completely factored, so we're going to set that x minus 1 equal to 0, as well as that x minus 9 equal to 0. For the x minus 1 is equal to 0, add your 1 over. That gives you that x is equal to 1. For the x minus 9 is equal to 0, add your 9 over. That gives you that x is equal to 9. So your two solutions here are 1 and 9. For 13, we have 2x squared plus 11x is equal to negative 12. For this one, we have to move the negative 12 over first, so we're going to add that to both sides. It does not combine with a like term on the left, so that's just going to give us 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 is equal to 0. Your a is not 1 here, so that's going to be 2 times 12 is 24. Your factors of 24 that add up to be 11 are 3 and 8. So this is going to get rewritten to be 2x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. You have four terms, so factor this by grouping now. The first, factor out an x. The second, you can factor out a positive 4. This is going to get rewritten to give you x times 2x plus 3 plus 4 times 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. 
your two sets of parentheses are the same. So we can rewrite this as 2x plus 3 times x plus 4 is equal to 0. You are completely factored. So from here, I'm going to just move this up. I'm going to set each of these equal to 0 and solve them. So from here, 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 3 over. That gives me 2x is equal to negative 3. Then I'm going to divide each side by the 2. And that's x is equal to negative 3 over 2. For the x plus 4 is equal to 0, I subtract the 4 over. And I just get that x is equal to negative 4. So two answers for this one, too. One that's the negative 3 halves. The other that's the negative 4. For the next part, we are solving using square roots. For 14, we have 2x minus 1 squared is equal to 35. For this one, your binomial squared is by itself, so we're going to square both sides to start this. That square root of the 2x minus 1 squared cancels out the power, so you just have 2x minus 1. The square root of 35, your 35 only has factors of 5 and 7, so this is just going to stay plus or minus the square root of 35. From here to get x by itself, we're going to add our 1 over first. That's going to leave us with 2x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 35. Next, we divide each side by the 2, and that gives us that x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 35 all over 2. For 15, we have x plus 4 squared is equal to 8. For this one, again, our radical, or sorry, our binomial squared is isolated. So we'll take the square root of both sides. The power and the square root cancel each other out. So we have x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. 8 has factors of 4 and 2. 4 is 2 and 2. So two of those 2s pair up. 1 stays under since it doesn't pair up with another 2. From here, we just got to move the 4 over. So we will subtract the 4 from each side. It is not a like term to that plus or minus square root 2, or sorry, 2 square root 2. So it's going to give us that x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root 2. Right. So the next part we're going to look at is solving by completing the square. When you solve by completing the square, you want your x squared and your x to be on one side, your constant to be on the other. So the term that doesn't have the x attached to it, move over first. If you do that, you can then isolate or find your b term. Do b over 2 squared, find what that is, add it to both sides of the equation. Once you add it to both sides of the equation, you're going to factor the left side, add the right side, and then take the square root of both sides. After you take the square root of both sides, you're just going to get x by itself. So for 16, you have x squared minus 4x plus 13 is equal to 0. Our 13 is not by itself, so we need to move that over first. So we're going to subtract 13 from both sides. That's going to give us x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 13. Your b is negative 4. So if we do b over 2 squared, that's going to give us negative 4 over 2 squared, which is negative 2 squared, which is 4. From here, that 4 is going to get added to both sides of your equation. This is going to give you x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to negative 13 plus 4. You simplify this by factoring the left side, adding the right side. The left side factors to be x minus 2 squared. The right side adds to give you negative 9. From here, you're going to take the square root of both sides. Now, tomorrow, when you take your test, we have not gone over the square root of a negative 9. I'm pulling that negative out by representing it with the i and then simplifying further. So, for the purpose of tomorrow... That negative underneath the radical tells you that there's no real solutions here. So you can just give me no solution. Again, if there's a negative under the radical, it's no real solutions. 
So you can just write no solution. For 17, you have x squared plus 6x plus 2 is equal to 0. This 2 needs to be moved over first, so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to give you x squared plus 6x is equal to negative 2. Your b is that positive 6. So if we do b over 2 squared, that's 6 over 2 squared, which is 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. That 9 gets added to both sides of your equation. So you're going to have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to negative 2 plus 9. Your left side factors to be x plus 3 squared. Your right side adds to give you positive 7. Take the square root of both sides. The square root cancels out the power on that x plus 3. So that's x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7, since the square root of 7 does not simplify. You still have to get x by itself, so move that 3 over by subtracting it from both sides, and that gives you x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. Our last part asks you to solve the equation using the quadratic formula. For these, all of your terms have to be on the same side of your equal sign. It has to be equal to 0. Identify your a, your b, and your c. Plug those a, b, c's in to x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So with 18, it gives you x squared plus 3x is equal to negative 8. You are going to move your 8 over first by adding it to both sides. That gives you x squared plus 3x plus 8 is equal to 0. Your a is 1, b is 3, c is 8. Again, we said our quadratic formula was x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So if we plug in our values, we're going to have x is equal to the opposite of 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8 all over 2 times 1. Next, this gives you x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 32 all over 2. Underneath that radical, you have that 9 minus 32, which is going to give you x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of a negative. The 2 turns into a 12, making the 3 a 2, so that's going to be 23. And this is all over 2. Just like the questions before this, if you have a negative under the radical, we're going to assume that that's no real solutions, so you can just give me no solution. For number 19, you have 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. For this one, you already have all of your terms on the same side. So a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 3, c is equal to negative 5. We're plugging it into that quadratic formula. Again, that's that negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So that's going to give us x is equal to the opposite of negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5 all over 2 times 2. Double negatives turn into positives, so that's going to give you 3 on the outside plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9. The negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 times negative 5 is a positive 40. And that's all over 4. Underneath that radical, you have 9 plus 40, which is 49. So x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 4. The square root of 49 does simplify fully to be 7. So x is equal to 3 plus or minus 7 over 4. We have numbers here that are not irrational numbers. So we're going to separate this into two equations and solve both. 
So we have x is equal to 3 plus 7 over 4, as well as x is equal to 3 minus 7 over 4. The 3 plus 7 over 4 gives us 10 over 4, which simplifies to be negative, or sorry, to be 5 over 2. Your 3 minus 7 gives us negative 4, so that's negative 4 over 4, which simplifies to be negative 1. For your last question, you're given negative 3x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. So our a is negative 3, b is 1, c is 2. Again, your quadratic formula is x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So we plug these values in. This gives us the opposite of 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 2 all over 2 times negative 3. We simplify this to give us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 12 times 2 is 24 all over negative 3. From here, or sorry, negative 6. Sorry. Okay, so from here, that 1 plus 24 underneath your radical gives you 25. We simplify this, and that's going to give us negative 1 plus or minus 5 all over negative 6. So again, we're not left with a radical, so we're going to separate this into two parts and solve both. So we have x is equal to negative 1 plus 5 over 6, or negative 6, sorry, and x is equal to negative 1 minus 5 over negative 6. The one on the left is going to give you 4 over negative 6, which simplifies to be negative 2 over 3. The one on the right, you have negative 6 over negative 6. So this would just be 1.